<clears throat> Hello YouTube, how are you? I've uh, turned the camera around so you can see my face instead of just my silhouette. Such a... <laughs> um, right, it's been a while since I made a video. I've had a holiday. And man, my head is full. Full because of uh, because of someone I found on YouTube, and yes, I've been waiting for this person, <laughs> and I'm convinced that it is him. It's the real McCoy, and um, yeah, I'm talking about Jesus, not God. Jesus is not God as I'd always kind of suspected. I know in my last video I was beginning to ponder if um, Jesus was the light, like the Son of God, but since I've been listening to the Divine Truth channel with um, Jesus, AJ Miller, and his soulmate, Mary, who was Mary Magdalene when he was Jesus and it was and this life was called Mary Luck and uh, yeah I stumbled onto him a couple of days before I was going on holiday um, I got to watch about six hours of his stuff and learnt enough to see to know that, um, I mean, I was 99.9% .9 sure then that he was. Um, now I'm 99.99999%. Um, it's only been sitting with me a few weeks. So because of discernment, I choose to leave that point not 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 one percent that it may be all a complete hoax. I remember I kept expecting trickery to come, um, but I don't think this is it, otherwise I wouldn't be 99.9999% sure. And yeah, he's got all the facts, all the information. So I'll say it again, Divine Truth is the channel on YouTube. You, there's about 800 hours worth of video most of it seminars that he's done over the past five years and it's absolutely fascinating but now I've got back off holiday yeah, I should sit straight <coughs> I'm trying to sit straight more anyway so I had you know two weeks on holiday to to ponder what I'd heard so far which was the main facts was you know what our soul is and okay so now I n know from what Jesus has said that all these souls are being created from God um, and they're sitting in an unincarnated unincar state until they get attached to a body right? Um, so in that un un uncarnated state, they're not really conscious, they're just like, they're the specific souls that God has created, um, but they're not um, yet conscious. So when our parents conceived a child, the, the, the soul, or half the soul, Right, because the soul is actually split in two. It's got a male and a female part. Or in some cases it's male and male, and in some cases it's female and female. But I think 85% is what Jesus said of the souls are male and female. So, so my parents conceived, and the moment that conception was done and the sperm met the egg, um, the soul, 
attached to the body and what all what was also created not just a physical body but also was created a spirit body okay so th that was a new thing to me I kind of always believed in reincarnation well and reincarnation is possible but um, only seven souls have done it so far or there are some more coming but the first one to come back in 1962 was Jesus. Jesus had been born with um, no emotional damage to his soul. Uh, God had, that's the gift that God gave us, is he <clears throat> gave us this one soul in perfect form from birth and Jesus was able to live his life at one with God and therefore reacted always in, 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 a, in a loving way. And um, he said he didn't do a lot of the miracles. The the Catholic Church has made Jesus out to be much more of a thing than he actually is. He's just a man like any of us, but he was born without this emotional damage and therefore lived his life differently. <coughs> so then when he died, he passed into the spirit world and was able to climb through all the levels, all the dimensions on the divine path of love and get to a point, level 22, when he could reincarnate as, as at level 22 he became fully united with his soulmate sort of so that they are absolutely connected, they were one. Now he would have probably loved to have carried on in that place because at that point, you know, just amazing what he could start learning, or both of them he, she. And, uh, but because of love and the state of the world, um, he made the loving decision to reincarnate, which is really hard, because you, know, you go back right back to level one. But what he got when he was born, when he was growing up as a child, he was starting to get memories of this past 2,000 years. So, so they, they, were the, they were the big things for me, because I'd always believed in reincarnation. It was just a comforting feeling to think that, well, I can screw this life up, but I'll get another one and many more, and as long as I'm good, you know, I'll, I'll get a good life next time. So, so that was my belief, and that, that, you know, I kind of had to wrestle with that, but I really felt it was truth. And I felt A.J. Miller being Jesus was truth as well. Um, I've had these sort of feelings for a, quite a long time in my life and I've always connected them to God. Although it's possible now that they are guiding spirits and they're projecting love at me when I come to the right conclusions. So I got back off holiday and I was keen to listen to more. And since I got back off holiday, it's been about five days, and I've listened to, <laughs> I dread to think how many hours I've actually listened to, but about 20 maybe, maybe, no more, 30, 30 hours of him talking, <laughs> and my God, there's, there's so much, and this is why this guy has to be for real. Because he's got so much knowledge. Um, as you start to listen more, you start to learn that things aren't, well, it gets complicated in a sense that. First of all, we're born with a non-perfect soul. We're born with emotional damage to our soul from our parents. So as soon as we're conceived, any emotional things coming off our parents, we're being affected by. So the whole time through the womb and, you know, then as we're born. So 
I mean, I consider myself quite lucky, but maybe I'm just kidding myself. But I, I've always sort of felt like, you know, I had a good childhood. At least I haven't been abused or anything like that that I know of. Hopefully you haven't. Um, you know, so I do consider myself quite fortunate in the sense that I, I feel I've had, you know, probably less emotional damage than um, than many other people. So, you know, but I've got addictions. I you know, smoke tobacco, I smoke cannabis, I like biscuits. So I've got physical addictions which are masking my emotional addictions that I'm unprepared to deal with. If I dealt with those emotional addictions, um, the physical addictions would would really just go away. And also any health problems. Um, so you know the, the the key here, if you like the the new way that Jesus is doing a new thing, is to um, deal with these emotional addictions. And they can be things like um, wanting to feel safe, because that's a mental addiction, because you're, you're trying to control your safety, whereas you should, should just put your trust in God, and, and, and you wouldn't have to worry about it. You wouldn't be doing things to make yourself feel safe, you know, that are over and beyond what just using your common sense if you're driving a car, you know, don't drive a car with your eyes closed and trust in God because that, that is just stupidity, isn't it? Also, don't drive 100 miles an hour through through a village, you know, that again would just be stupid. And even the um, driving a car is actually unloving. So you've got to start designing your life to be more loving, um, do everything in harmony with love, um, look at all your emotional addictions. Any time you get even the slightest bit narky or annoyed with something, is covering up some sort of damage and emotion. Now, what I've been listening to today <clears throat> makes it more complicated and harder. So you see, I said when the when the when the physical body was created, there was also a spiritual body created. I'll just say quickly, animals, animals have a body and a spiritual body, but they don't have a soul. They're sort of, I guess, they're just sort of fed off divine love and they reflect our emotions um, back to us. So animals are like, a, are like a reflection back to us and anything living. And it's all down to the soul. The soul is the most powerful thing. And the soul, you know, once we start to repair it a little bit, is going to make us feel better, lighter, more energy. We're going to know where our desires lie. We won't get ill. We won't get medical conditions. It's in our soul. And unfortunately, there's so everything. All the teachings so far have been false. There's some truth in some of them, but any of them, Buddha. Uh, Muslims, Christians, you know, they've all got wrong things and you start mentioning politics and economics, you know, we know that's wrong. So, you know, this is the new way and um, you've got to, you've got to check it out as my recommendation. It's, um, it's amazing and it's, you know, I'm really thankful that it's come, although facing the truth I've got to admit, you know, it's quite hard. I, I'd say that I was uh, quite, you know, happier in a way in my ignorance before. Although I knew there was a truth out there that I wasn't getting, it was it was quite blissful in a sense now that I know the truth. Uh, but, you know, truth is what I wanted and truth is what I'll go with. So the, the, what I've been listening to today is about sleep and it's quite it's fascinating and, and quite scary because most of us don't remember mo most of our sleep state. 
Now dreams, dreams is when our soul is trying to give us a message. And that's what I always believed anyway. So I never worried too much that I wasn't remembering my sleep because if my soul needed me to get a message, you know, I, w I was getting it. Um, and I'd say most recently, you know, the dreams I've been having are about sex, most of them. And probably because I haven't had any sex, physical body for six so years now. I hope it's not seven. It might be. 2007. <sighs> I think it's seven. <laughs> So, um, I ne you know, I never took, I thought that meant um, my soul's, you know, compensating for me not having sex. Well, it might be. Right. Yeah. I wake up quite happy. I mean, that's the key. I think that's the key thing, is that you wake up happy. But I have got things going on. Now, the way to get through it is to ask God for help and actually to want it, you know, feel it with your heart. If you, a prayer really is more about desire. So if you want to pray to God, really he's only going to hear if you desire it from the heart, like an emotion. Then he's going to hear it and then he'll act. So last few nights I've been going to bed sort of asking if he could show me my, my emotional damage, you know, anything I need to sort out. Because I... I kind of feel like I've got a block on that. And I figure because I have addictions, you know, I've got to give them up too. And perhaps if I give them up, then I'll start to see where my uh, blockages are. So I'm going to work with that, you know. It's not so easy. I've tried to cut down as much as I can on smoking. And while I'm not smoking, you know, if I next time I want a fag, if I can resist the urge, then, then that's one point on the good side. Anyway, so th this thing about sleep. Um, you know, I quite often wake up in the morning with an erection. I just always assumed that was to stop me needing the wee. <laughs> um, but it's quite possible this morning I woke up with an erection. It's quite possible. And I did have a few recollections of... Um, Sex. I wasn't having sex, but I was um, seeing a naked woman and stroking her. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's been quite hard to resist just thinking about that and all, all day today, but I, I have resisted it. So it's quite possible I was involved in, you know, sexual acts all night. I seem to sort of remember being with this one particular woman I mean, I can't really remember what she looked like too much. I have a feeling on who she might be, but I'm not going to say. <clears throat> For quite a long period of the night, but there may have been others, you know, so in a sense where I think I'm being all, uh, all sort of virtuous during the day and you know, going without sex. I'm not necessarily going without sexual thoughts, although I am repressing them mostly, I uh, <clears throat> come in my sleep state and in your sleep state you're more likely just to do what you want. And that is actually causing more emotional damage to my soul. So as you might be trying to repair your soul during the day, you might be screwing it up at night. And the key is, is to ask God to reveal to you you want to know the truth of what's happening in your dreams and most of the time we don't remember it it's actually because we don't want to remember it we don't want to know where we are in our sleep state because it's bad it doesn't fit with the good moral person we think we are during our awake state and you see how it gets complicated so for a third of our lives, whereas we've always, well I was, or I've always thought we're sort of pretty much not in control, we are. So, yeah, it's amazing. And, you know, I could sit here talking for hours, 
or you could just go over there to AJ Miller and listen to him on the Divine Truth channel. Okay? But I will, will say this, like the more I've listened to Jesus, you know, he doesn't really give it to you nicely. <laughs> he gives it to you dead straight, which sometimes can feel, will make you sort of dislike him because he's telling you stuff. <laughs> You don't necessarily want to hear. And that is a good time to end this video because I've got to answer the phone. Okay, bye.